Hello everyone and welcome to my Technic Pack tutorial. Um, in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to build the components for the nuclear reactor in Industrial Craft 2. Uh, just for reference purposes, I'm using Industrial Craft 1.71. I believe the version in Industrial Craft 6 or in uh, Technic 6 currently is 1.70. It shouldn't make a difference. The information is still all the same. Nothing's changed. I'm just using a slightly more updated version. Uh, and so for those of you who aren't using Technic, this information is still perfectly usable for you guys. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a bit of a breakdown on the uh, materials you're going to need to make the nuclear reactor and the six reactor chambers for a six chamber reactor. Now, for those of you who've dabbled in this before, you know that that actually means you need eight reactor chambers. And the reason for that is the recipe to make a nuclear rea nuclear reactor requires two reactor chambers to make. So we're going to make one reactor and eight chambers in total. So the first sign we're going to look at, and I've got all the uh, amounts on these signs here, uh, 24 IRP, 8 IHD, 30, 36 advanced alloy, and two advanced circuits. I'll explain what this means in a bit, but basically once you have all these materials, you are set to make your official six chamber reactor. So I'll come back to this sign when, once we've once I've explained everything else. So to officially start off the list, we have 16 coolant cells, one furnace, one RE battery, nine machine blocks, 10 advanced circuits, 68 advanced alloy, and 144 copper. Now that's not that doesn't seem like too bad of a list. But it can be broken down. The advanced alloy, the advanced circuit, you know, basically the majority of it can be broken down into its subcomponents. So we're gonna we're gonna break this down and get a slightly more comprehensive list. Uh, so we have 286 refined iron now, 62 redstone, 61 copper cables, 20 lapis, 20 glowstone dust. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough room to put dust on there, but it is glowstone dust, not glowstone blocks. Uh, 272 tin, 204 bronze, 8 cobblestone, and 144 copper. And again, we can break this down even further, the bronze into copper and tin, any copper cable. And when I say copper cable, I mean insulated copper cable down into copper and rubber. So the final list, and actually the math on that is just bronze equals 3 copper dust and 1 tin, and copper cable equals 3 copper and 6 rubber. So the final list that we have is 286 refined iron, 62 redstone, 20 lapis, 20 glowstone dust, 476 tin, 802 co copper, 8 cobblestone, and 61 rubber. Now I wouldn't recommend collecting all these materials and then trying to build this. Just go through industrial craft like industrial craft like you normally would and then you know whenever you have surplus of materials make a couple parts and then just collect the parts until you have enough to make the reactor. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself with w way more materials than you're going to be able to handle without equivalent exchange in the alchemy chests or the alchemy bags, for example. Um, and I would actually recommend if you're playing Technic, get yourself an alchemy bag as you're going to need it because a lot of the, a lot of the uh, components for the nuclear reactor are not stackable and you will quickly run out of inventory space. Uh, so the first thing recipes I'm going to show you guys are for the advanced alloy and the advanced circuit. Now, those aren't directly, those two components aren't directly linked to the um, reactor, but they are very important and you will not be able to make it without them. So we're gonna start off with the advanced alloy. Now, before we can get advanced alloy, we need to make ourselves some mixed metal ingots, which are made like so. Three refined iron across the top, three bronze in the middle, and three tin on the bottom. And that will give us two mixed metal ingots. Again, I'm using automatic crafting tables from BuildCraft just to hold the recipes in there, rather than using the NEI and trying to flick through there. I find that awfully con uh, disconcerting, usually. All right. So, for those of you who forget how to make bronze, it's just three pieces of copper dust and one piece of tin. It doesn't matter where they are. I just like it looking nice and neat. Um, and for those of you not using the Technic Pack, you can combine copper and tin ingots, I believe, into copper bar or into bronze bars or bronze ingots. Sorry. Um, but if you are using Technic, that recipe has been disabled in favor of the Forestry's Brass recipe. Uh, so just be warned, if you try to use the actual bars themselves, you're going to have an issue if you're using Technic. 
So what we're going to do with those mixed metal ingots that we've collected, we're going to put those in our compressor. And those will be compressed into advanced alloy, which I'll come back to in a minute. I don't believe I've shown you guys the compressor recipe. So the compressor recipe is uh, three smooth stone on the right, three smooth stone on the left, a machine block in the center, and one electronic circuit on the bottom. I'm obviously, I'm not going to craft this. I'm just showing you guys the recipe. But it, it accepts uh, 32 EUs per tick which is the output on a bat box and actually behind this I have both the compressor on the bottom and the extractor on the top powered by a geothermal generator hooked up to two separate bat boxes and of course you can upgrade these I haven't talked about this yet but in the new version of industrial craft you can actually update these to use more power to be faster um, but that's a later video so we're going to take our advanced alloy out of the compressor for now and we're just going to put them here and we're going to move on to the advanced circuit. The advanced circuit is made like so, with redstone in each corner, glowstone dust on the right and left, lapis on the top and bottom, an electronic circuit in the center. Now, obviously, I'm missing an electronic circuit here because I want to show you guys this recipe as just in case someone's forgotten it. Uh, so it's six copper cable, three on the top, three on the bottom, Redstone on the left, on the right and left, and a refined iron in the center. Give this an electronic circuit. Plop that on in the middle, and we're going to grab ourselves an advanced circuit. Uh, now, now the next thing I'm going to show you is actually the first real component of a nuclear reactor. Uh, it's the first thing that does not stack, so be warned when you make these, you are going to run out of room quickly unless you are using an alchemy bag or an alchem alchemy alchemy chest, which I would recommend you definitely use if you have equivalent exchange installed. So we're going to make ourselves some coolant cells. However, before we can make coolant cells, we need water cells. And before we have water cells, we need empty cells to fill them, or to fill empty cells into water cells. So to make an empty cell, it basically looks like you're trying to make a gear out of tin, like a gear from Buildcraft, if you remember. Um, now, four pieces of tin will give you 16 empty cells, which is quite good, if you ask me. And as you can see, if I take this out, you can actually make a bucket using three. Uh, one bucket is the equivalent of one cell. The only difference is when you use a cell compared to a bucket in a machine, the cell gets used up and the bucket does not. Now, if you want to fill these up quickly and you don't want to have to keep going out to an ocean, I would recommend making a 3x3x1, three by three by so it's one deep and 3x3, three three, of water source blocks. Or, as you can see, you know, just put one in each corner and it will automatically create source blocks all around. By taking water from the center row, like I'm doing now, you can see that it will automatically always fill itself back up. And you can do so from over here as well, or, you know, whatever. I would, uh, don't take it from, like, the left row or the right row. If you take too many blocks out of one row on the side, you can actually break your 3x3 three three water table, and you'll have to fix it. It's not a big deal, but you can't fix it with water cells. You have to get water, block, or, uh, water blocks or water buckets. So as you can see, I've got 16 water cells now. And I'm going to put those in an extractor. And I've already showed you guys the recipe for this, so I'm not going to bother. Sorry. Um, I've already showed you guys the recipe for the extractor, so I'm not going to bother showing that to you again. This is going to compress into a um, into a coolant cell. Now, the water cells are stackable. The coolant cells are not. So as you can see, when this finishes, <coughs> sorry, we have a coolant cell. And it will not start to extract the next water cell until we remove the coolant cell from there. So you can extract it using Buildcraft or Red Power or just do it manually. But if you don't, don't do it, period. It's just not going, it's only going to do one coolant cell at a time. And it will wait until you remove it. So, now that we've done this, we can move on to the integrated reactor plating. And this is another... Oh, stupid rain. This is the next... Uh, well, this is one of the most basic parts of the nuclear reactor. It seems kind of complicated at first, and I'm not going to explain how they quite work quite yet. I'll explain that when I show you guys how to build them, uh, or how to build the actual reactor builds. But this is the recipe for that. It's an integrated reactor plating, and it just looks like kind of—it literally looks like a plate, like a plating that would go on the side of something, pretty much. Uh, it's four pieces of copper around a piece of advanced alloy. As you can see, it take that, and again, in the IRP or the integrated reactor plating 
they don't stack. Same with the coolant cells again. So these items are not going to stack in your inventory. You're going to quickly fill that up. Um, the next thing we're going to make is a step up from an integrated reactor plating. It is actually the integrated heat disperser. It is made using two coolant cells, one integrated reactor plating, or one IRP, as I might refer to it if I see it again, uh, two pieces of copper, and one advanced circuit, and that gives us an integrated heat disperser. Just to show you guys that they don't stack, if I try to put this coolant cell on top of here, as you can see, it's not. I'm clicking, you probably can't hear that, but I'm clicking and it's not putting it down. It might be switching it back and forth, I don't really know, it doesn't really matter. It's not putting it down, which is pretty much useless to us. So we can't stack this, so this is a really hard recipe to, I don't even think you can actually automate this recipe, you have to build this by hand each time. So now that you know what an integrated reactor plating is, the recipe for it, and what it looks like, now, I will come back to this sign and explain what this sign means. Um, in order to have enough materials to make one nuclear reactor and the six uh, reactor chambers outside of the two needed for the reactor, you need 26 IRPs or integrated reactor platings, eight integrated heat dispersers or eight IHDs, 36 pieces of advanced alloy, and two advanced circuits. So if you can come up with this list of materials right here, you will have everything you need to make yourself a six chamber reactor. So without further ado, let's show the reactor chamber recipe. It is four pieces of advanced alloy in each corner, or well, one in each corner, four in total. A IRP here, here, and here, the left, right, well, left, right, and bottom. The machine block in the middle, and an IHD in the top, integrated heat disperser, again in the top. And you'll need to make eight of these in total for reactor chambers. And these do stack. These are actually stackable, so you don't have to worry about running out of any, any more room once you reach this point. Those are, in fact, stackable, as are the nuclear, reac nuclear reactors. I believe these are stackable as well, although why you would need to stack them, I have no idea. Um, so the recipe, as you can see, is an advanced alloy in each corner, two advanced circuits, one in the bottom and one in the top center and a generator in the middle. Now I'm going to show you guys the generator using the NEI recipe page by pushing R. And as you can see, the recipe is one RE battery, one machine block, and one furnace, or one RE battery, three refined iron, and one iron furnace. Now the recipe I used in my uh, included list of materials is the top one for the standard furnace. It really doesn't matter either way which one you use. It has the same equivalent uh, value for iron, so there isn't a better one. As you can see, you just put the generator in the middle there, and you'll have a nuclear reactor. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Um, I am going to do a couple more videos. I'll show how to build a, a uh, reactor chamber or reactor bunker that will protect your world from any mishaps you might have, as well as, a, as, well as the way I set up my reactors to surround them with water so that I still have access to my reactor without having to go and break a ton of blocks. Um, I'm going to show how to make those different blocks that you need to use, such as reinforced stone and reinforced glass. Um, I'm also going to make a video on how to, on some different uh, reactor builds. So, like, I might do a one or two super powered builds with an ice converter involved somehow. I might just do a couple of really easy builds if you guys want. Um, and that'll probably be it. If you guys have any other requests on what you want me to do, I don't remember who requested this right now as I don't have it open, but if you guys have any requests for any mods you want me to do a uh, video on or any information you'd like from, for example, industrial craft or build craft, um, just leave a comment in the section below or, you know, PM me, whatever. Just let me know and I can get back to you and let you know about how long it will take me to get around to it. If it's something I haven't seen before, uh, Granted, it'll take me a little bit longer to get around to doing that, but if it's something I have done before, I'll probably be able to get around to, to it a lot sooner. Now, as I've got two or three videos lined up on the nuclear reactors, don't expect anything back right away if you make a request, but the reactors will probably be done by Wednesday or Thursday at the latest, and I'll probably be uploading most of these videos on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful for you guys, and again, I'll show you guys more on nuclear reactors soon. Uh, thanks for watching, good luck, and have fun.